Hello everyone, this is Eric, and it's been a while since I make another video about work-related topics in tech. So as we approach to 2025, I have been reflecting on my journeys in tech industry over the years, and from working at big tech companies to startups to collaborating with some most talented engineers, I have identified and gathered some key habits that truly sets the top 1% software engineers apart. So in this video, I will share those insights and practical traits that I have personally applied and found incredibly useful in my own career. Whether you're aiming to level up or simply just want to become a better engineer, these lessons will give you a clear edge. And of course, if you're interested in more content like this, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and like this video. And the timestamp of this video is in the description below, so feel free to jump to any section you like. And if so far sounds interesting, let's get started. The first tip is one pull request or PR per day. So PR you could think of as like a contribution. So you're making work contributions daily. And here you can see this is a contribution chart and lighter the green means less contribution and darker the green means more contributions. So here you can see for January 1st, maybe we're making like two to five PRs. Maybe for lighter greens, maybe that's like one to zero PRs. Uh, or for darker greens, maybe that's like, you know, five plus PRs per day, right? So, so you can see that based on this contribution graph, we're constantly making contributions daily in our work. Now, for those who are wondering how does pull requests work in software development? So here you can see this is a software engineer trying to write code or this feature, and we submit a code review for others to review. And this others could means like managers, senior developers, principal engineers, or colleagues and such, right? Maybe they will provide feedbacks or comments or questions. And once we resolve those comments or revisions and others have approved our pull request, then we can be able to merge our pull request to the main branch. And this way, our code will be added to the production product. So that's basically how the pull request work in software development is the standard process that software development follows to make the contributions to our company product. Now, one benefit of having one pull request per day is to break down bigger tasks into a smaller task to reduce complexity. Now, we can all agree that smaller PRs are easy to review and enable quicker feedbacks and reduce time wasted going in the wrong directions. So for example, here we have two developers and one developer writes a big pull request. And because of the size of the pull request, it takes a longer review process. Plus there could be many revisions and the pull request might lead to a wrong directions based on the feedbacks that's given by others. Whereas another developer writes a smaller PR daily, which smaller PRs are easy to review. So it gives a quicker feedback from others and it also improves productivity and decrease complexity for reviewers to review and working towards this end goal that you have. And the other benefit of one pull request per day is to reduce unnecessary rework. Now, just like the example that we mentioned, if we're trying to write a big PR like this, let's say if other review our big PRs, if they have identified some critical issues about our pull request, or there could be others who have some more context and seeing that there is a duplicate work that's being done in the organization, then we have already spent a large portion of our time in the wrong direction, whereas having a smaller PRs, we're constantly getting reviewed by others. And if we define a critical problems with the work that we're doing, we can be able to identify the issue early to avoid the big investment in the wrong direction. Third benefit is to improve personal achievement and motivation. And this one is obvious because having a clear and small goals daily, which improves our sense of achievement and boosting our productivity and motivation. And I learned that from the book of the process principle by the Harvard Business School professor. And this book emphasized that having a small daily achievement significantly approves our work productivity and motivation in the long run. So using the example that we have mentioned before, let's say if we have one developer A writes a big pull request, then the time it takes for the pull request to review is longer than the smaller PR, and that might lead to longer development time, which might lead to missing deadlines. Or And let's say we found there's a critical issues, and we kind of circle back and then try to make our revisions, and then try to repeat this process over and over again. At the end, it will be very demotivating because it might feel like this project is not even moving forward and it's kind of stuck on this project for maybe weeks or even months, which is painful. But on the other hand, if we have a smaller PR where developer B makes a smaller PRs daily, and this will boost our motivation because we're getting things done daily. And if we were to look at our contribution graph, we know that, hey, look, we are making contributions daily, even though some days we're making maybe like one pull request or some days we're making more. 
but at least we're getting things done daily and we have a trackable progress that we're working towards. And this process not only apply for pull requests, but also pull request review. And for myself, for someone who have reviewed more than 10 pull requests per day, I often find that starting off with a smaller pull request review first is more productive than starting from the big pull request. Yes, the work amount are the same, but, but I often find that we're getting more things done by starting off small, which I find that it really improves our productivity and motivation. Now, the other benefit is more efficient testing. When I talk about testing, I'm not only talking about manual testing, but also automation testing. So let's say we have a big pull request. This will significantly increase our testing complexity, which means that we're going to write more automated testing. We're gonna do more manual testing. Then in this case, if we were to find a bug and we will basically have to revert the entire pull request and then figure out where the bug is, fix it, and then submit this pull request again, which is not gonna be very productive. But let's say if we have a smaller pull request, we reduce the testing complexity, making our test code easier to write, easier to test and maintain, then in this case, each feature or each class has a PR. Then if we found a bug, for example, we found a bug in feature one, but feature two is fine, then we can just revert the feature one without effect all the works that we have done. Now, the second point is problem solving mindset. So problem solving mindset is not just about taking a ticket or a bug and trying to fix it. That's called problem solving skill. Problem solving mindset is about taking a ambiguous requirement and convert it into a clear actionable plan. So for example, let's say we have a developer and we take a ambiguous requirement and we first divide and conquer, break these problems down into a smaller problems and then convert them into actionable steps. Things like why we need this feature, what's the client's requirement, right? And what we need to include for our MVP or in this case, minimal viable product or we can start by writing our technical or product specs, talk about how we can be able to scale this. So these are something that we need to know to take on this big requirements and we can be able to find them by looking at the stats or discuss with the customers or the product managers and so on, right? For taking on this ambiguous requirement and then create an actionable plan to solve this. Now you might be thinking that, well, most of this seems like a manager's work or a product manager's work. And you're right, but doesn't mean that we cannot contribute. And there's a lot of things that product managers or managers need to answers from us like the timelines or time versus quality trade-offs or future scaling which we can be able to define them in these product specs or technical specs and all in all you can see that software engineers responsibility isn't just about coding but it's about problem solving how we can be able to take a ambiguous problem break it down into a smaller actionable problems and be able to solve them. And the third point is to let your manager know your career goal. So most software engineers think that manager is there to manage and also ensure you come to work on time, right? But the thing is that you can also use your manager to achieve your career goal. So let's say your goal is to go from L5 to L6, right? From, you know, mid-level to senior level or from junior level to mid-level, right? So usually some people, they would think that I just worked there for two to three years and expect that manager will acknowledge my skills and give me the promotion. But usually that's unlikely to happen because if you never bring up your career development goals, chances are your manager is not going to pay attention to you know everyone's career goal. Unless if you made a like a significant impact to the team without a clear communication, your manager might just never bring it up, even though you meet the requirement for the next level. And the solution to this is you want to bring this up into a one-on-one -on -one meeting with your manager. So let's say every one-on-one -on -one meeting that you have with your manager, you always bring it up, review the things for your next level and things that you did that meet the requirements and what you're lacking. So your manager knows what opportunities you need to meet the next level goal and give you the ownership or projects and provide you the feedback during that one-on-one. -on -one. This way it will ensure you're on the right track to achieve your career goal. Now for one-on-one -on -one meeting, I recommend that you keep a one-on-one -on -one documentation notes where you keep track of all the progress that you made in these one-on-one -on -one meetings. For example, for me, for each of the one-on-one -on -one meeting, I have the time and as well as the agenda column. And here you can see, I can be able to put the agenda for what I can discuss with the manager in this meeting and the action items that the manager recommend. For example, let's say if I face a challenge, I want to seek my manager's opinions. Then after my manager gives me my feedbacks, then I will write it down to those action items. And during those weeks, when I execute those action items, and I can also put notes to track my progress. And if there's more things that I want to discuss, I can always write it down in the next agenda for the next meeting. And the good thing about having a notes like this is that I can always review back on what we have discussed before. And it can also keeps the expectation clear between you and your manager so that you know exactly what to work on and what you did well. And also having a one-on-one -on -one note like this, you can be able to come prepared before the meeting. And also make sure to share this documentation with your manager so that your manager can also be able to see that when they write your performance review as well.